Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything. I'm coming back at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In this video, we're going to be talking about building some terrain. We're going to be building picket fences. Okay, we're going to be building uh, some picket fences for my Quattro Bra project. And what they're going to be is uh, in Quattro Bra, I'm going to make some town sectors and I'm going to line them on the edges with picket fences. So I figured this is a good opportunity to show you how to make these picket fences. First of all, grab some popsicle sticks. As you can see here, I've got these uh, six inch popsicle sticks. They're actually listed as 5.9, but still, they're six inches. Great, and uh, they are three quarters of an inch wide. Uh, you can get any real, any popsicle sticks. I measure them to the size that I want, like, and then I, I, I put a line where I want to cut it. And then I have a pair of scissors, and I'm using Fiskars. And what I do is I just come up to the popsicle stick, and I cut it straight across the line. Okay? And then this is just an extra piece. Toss it. And then, because all I need is this much. And this is based on how long you want your fences. I mean, some of my fences are going to be the full six inches. And a standard fence on your battlefield is going to be six inches. Well, this is not a picket fence. This is just a rail fence. Uh, but I have that out there as a reference. Okay, so then I take it, and I'm using my scissors and a popsicle stick, and I am just trimming the edges, making it a circle similar to the other end. Uh, one of the reasons why you do want to make it a circle is so that if you need to, when you're laying it on the battlefield, you need to put it at not a right angle. If you need to put it kind of at a, if you've got a fence like this and a fence like that, if you put them end to end, it's going to look just fine. But if you needed to do something like this, you can do that. And the round edges will make it so that it's not uh, obtrusive on the, on the battlefield. Okay, so then I've got this little piece here that will wind up being a short picket fence uh, when I get done. Uh, I have all of these already pre-cut. Uh, let me go ahead, and these three right here I still need to cut. Let me cut these. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got these guys cut. Now, I have some uh, hobby sticks that I bought at Hobby Lobby. Uh, it comes in a bag of like a million. I think there's like 200 sticks or something. Well, you grab about 15 or or 20 sticks and then what you're, what you're going to do is lay them out side by side and try to get them as even as possible. So I, what I do is I take a straight popsicle stick, slide it up or slide these down until they're straight across. Right? Okay. Then I use the very same popsicle stick and I measure, well see, the height of my fences is going to be based on 28 millimeter figures, and I want the fence to be about like about like that, you know, about waist high. So what I've done was I'm using this as a reference, but you don't really need to because the fences are going to be about three quarters of an inch tall, right? So you can use the width of your popsicle stick for that. So what I'm doing is I'm making these posts just a slight bigger, slightly bigger than th three quarters of an inch because of the flock and the base of the figures and things like that. And then I draw a line across. I'm just using this as a straight edge ruler basically. And then we're going to make our second row. Okay, so now you can see, I don't know if you can see this, but I have a line going across there and a line going across there. All right, so we're going to take my metal ruler and we're going to use it to hold down the, the wood as I cut. And we're just going to cut. A number of times. Across the wood. OK, so basically I score the edges. I don't, you don't have to cut all the way through. Then you take the wood and you bend it back towards the cut. And what happens is it breaks 
right along the line where you scored it. Okay, now don't don't bend the wood away from the cut because then what you'll get then is uh, your wood will splinter. You have to basically pop it back towards the cut and you'll get a much cleaner break. Okay, let me break all these and I'll be right back. Okay, so now this should be a big enough pile for me to do what I want to do. Uh, <clears throat> so what I, now what I'm gonna do is individually go through these and you can see that some of the wood broke unevenly. And I'm just gonna take it and trim it off and it's gonna be a better piece of wood. And that's just gonna be like this, the few splinters that are sticking out. I'm just gonna go down each piece of wood, clean it off a little bit. And this doesn't take much time at all. And once I get done, I'll be right back. All right, guys, the next thing you do is you grab a pack of craft picks. Uh, these are like, uh, they're shaped like toothpicks, but they're uh, about 3 sixteenths wide and very thin, like maybe one millimeter thick. Uh, and they come to a little point at the tip, rounded edge. Um, you get 500 of them for 347 at Hobby Lobby. That's pretty awesome. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing these and I'm cutting off the bottoms. So I just take a handful of like four of them at a time and I, I line them up at the bottom right there I grab my scissors and I just cut off the round piece I just want to make I just want to make them flat that's all I'm asking right and now uh, you need to do a shit ton of these okay so uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make one we're just I'm not played all these out but we're just gonna make one fence line uh, and then we'll and then I'll do the rest later off camera. But we're just going to do one. Okay, so let me grab uh, four more of these. And I do four at a time because uh, it just seems like that's the right amount for the scissors to cut. Uh, anything more than that, it becomes like really difficult. And I spread them out a little bit so they're not, so the scissors are not cutting every single one of them at the same time. There smooth now I got a pile of them right okay these guys aren't cut yet we'll just move them over here okay so imagine um, taking these posts right gluing them down onto the fence okay so far so good right so they would be glued down on the popsicle stick along the line and then I'm going to take a couple of these craft picks. I'm going to cut the other end off, so I'll show you. But I'm just measuring right now. And we're going to go all the way to the end of the popsicle stick. And since I've got the edge of the popsicle stick along the guidelines here, yeah, my planning was actually for one in the middle and one on the ends. Okay, so I'm going to put that pot. And this can be... crossed there that's actually going to be very perfect so what I need to do now is uh, cut the tips off of these the bottom bottom ends that is not the tips the rounded edges because I want this flat edge up against this line which lines up with that popsicle stick right just like that. I don't know if you can kind of see that, but it goes to the full six inches. All right, so what I do is I take three of the posts. I'm going to line the popsicle up with the, uh, the, the, the line here on the, on the cutting board and with the uh, six inch lines. And I'm going to put one post in the middle the three inch mark, and then I'm gonna put one post in the middle of the last inch. You see how that's in the middle of the last inch? Okay, I wish I could just like pin this or hold this down uh, because I don't want these posts to move. I could probably take a popsicle stick and put it on the other end to kind of just support them. Okay, so now while holding this down, I'm gonna put a drop of glue 
close to the top edge. See that? I don't know if you can see that on the camera. I'm going to do the same on this one. And then the same on this one. Because if you don't hold it down, your Elmer's glue, the tension of the Elmer's glue will actually pick up the wood. And you don't want that to happen. Okay. So I'm using the stick to make sure that these are all even because once it dries, you're going to pick that up and you're going to glue it onto the popsicle stick. I'm going to line it up with the six inch mark and drop it on the glue. You need to put just a little bit more glue on the center post. The reason why that is, is because when you line this up, they're going to overlap a little bit. All right, now you're going to do the exact same thing. You probably don't have to worry about it lifting up now just because of the weight of the extra piece of glue, I mean wood. But I'm going to put one on the bottom as well. Just a small little dab. A larger dab, maybe double dab, because they're going to be overlapping. And then one dab there. And then, and then before you let it sit and dry, you want to make sure that the, the three upright posts are holding this even against the popsicle stick. Because if you don't, when it dries, when you put it up on the popsicle stick, it might not be, whoops, I just turned that. It might not be even. And then you'd have a little bit of discrepancy. Okay, so we're going to let that dry just for a few minutes. All right, all right, we did it again. We went ahead and we, while that's drying, we went ahead and laid out a bunch of our, our hobby picks and uh, I lined them up on the bottom so they're all uh, very close to being lined up. And they don't have to be exactly perfectly lined up. Your picket fence doesn't have to be a perfect picket fence. You can actually have missing uh, pickets. You can actually have some that are cockeyed, catty corner, things like that. Okay, now, these are all way too tall, as we know. We don't want them to be more than about three quarters of an inch tall. But uh, the top of the picket is going to be pointed, right? And it's going to make it's going to be a very uh, distinct look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler here, and luckily I've got measurements along my uh, cutting board. So I will be able to take it and put it at three quarters of an inch. And then I'm just going to put it up just a little bit more. I mean, not, not exactly three quarters, maybe 13 sixteenths or something like that. Okay, it's pretty close. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll take a pen and I'll mark them and then maybe I'll score them or maybe I'll just come back later with a pair of scissors and cut them exactly at that spot. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to grab a handful of them line them up on the bottom, find where the pen mark is, and then just start cutting right at that spot. All right, let me get these cut, and then I'll be right back. All right, now that you've got them cut, I've got the ones that were, they were cut off of right here. And it looks like I would be able to get another set of these from the very same picks. So you can basically reuse these picks here to double your numbers. Uh, okay, so now that I now here comes the time-consuming part, because these have to be cut individually. You got to take them one at a time. So what I do is I take one picket fence, I look at the top, and I'm going to cut the corners off. So basically, I just take my scissors and I just go chop, chop, and you cut your corners off. Now this has got a flat tip. That's fine. You could do uh, extremely pointed tips or you can do flat tips. Just depends on how much of the corner you want to cut off. And these will be the tops of the pickets. I look at each post, each picket, I find the end that I think is the flattest and then I cut the other end because it's the one that's not going to be on the ground. It's the one that's going to be at the top. 
All right, let me cut all these and I'll be right back. It'll be a minute. All right, guys, now that I got all my little pickets cut out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a line of glue along the top of this bar and a line of glue along the bottom of this bar. And then I'm just going to take these and lay them down. All right, so let's show what I'm talking about here. All the way across. And all the way across the bottom. All right, so I got a bead of glue along both ends. So now what I'm going to do is take my pickets and just start at one end and laying them on there, okay, all the way to the end. And I'm trying to eyeball it and using my uh, popsicle stick here uh, as uh, pretending it's the ground or the base, I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to kind of eyeball where the picket should go. Um, it doesn't matter if it is exact because once you start flocking the picket fence, it's going to uh, make it look a lot better. Also, I don't want to uh, worry about these pickets being exactly perfectly aligned with each other. You can see how they're a little bit off. Uh, I like a little imperfection in my terrain. Maybe not too much imperfection, all right? There we go. And as I go, I can fix it. Right now, I'm just laying them on top. We'll fix it as we go. And remember, put the point on the top. The part that you cut, make sure you put it on the top. Okay, let me lay all these down real quick, and I'll be right back with the adjustments. Okay, I've laid them all down onto the uh, frame. Now, you want to make sure your picket, the last picket goes to the edge, and you want to make your first picket go to the edge, and then the ones in the middle, you just want to kind of spread them out uh, evenly. Uh, some can be touching, some others can be gap, there can be gaps. There we go. So we just leave that, leave that to dry just a minute. You'll notice that it's starting to bow, but that's because of the liquid in the glue wants to make it kind of arch like that. But that's okay. Don't sweat it. Um, when you glue it to your base, it's going gonna, it's gonna to straighten out. Now, this is without any imperfections. Uh, you can pull one or two of these uh, pickets off of there if you want. And then place them like at an angle. Or place them on the ground next to them. Or however you want to do it. Make it loose. Like attach it at the top and move the bottom off. You can, make, you can do all kinds of ingenious things to make the picket look a lot better. Okay, I'm going to let that dry, and then we'll go to the next step. Be right back. All right, I decided to go ahead and show you how to make a gate, um, a gate door, I should say, while we're waiting for that to dry. Uh, one thing you do is you just grab a couple of your pickets before you trim the edges, right? So you've got some three-quarter inch sticks. You just hold those off to the side somewhere. Then you take five of your popsicle sticks, line them up on the uh, any of your one inch squares. Uh, you want to put them across here. You want to make sure that they're even on the bottom. There you go. Now you're going to use your popsicle stick as a template because it has the round edge. You see you got your one inch mark, so you're going to want to put your popsicle stick in the middle of these five pickets up to about and more than the one inch mark. About halfway, you, you see how there's a curve here, so you want the one inch mark to split that curve. Uh, so you go out maybe another quarter of an inch above it, maybe, maybe just a little bit less. Hold that down and you grab your pencil and you mark these pickets in that semicircular pattern. Then you grab your scissors and you cut each one of these along. And it could be pretty straight if you want it to be. Okay, so there's not any real 
sharp breaks in the pattern So you got your door like that. I don't know if you can really see that. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is line these up just the way they're supposed to be. As tight as I can get them without them popping out. Then I'm going to hold them down. I'm going to put a bead of glue across all boards. Get this popsicle stick out of the way. Use this. Line up the bottom. Then I'm going to take one of those pickets that I didn't cut the tips off. Oh, wait. I've got to do another bead along the bottom. Now you'll notice that these boards, the cross boards, actually extend past. I, I lined them up evenly on one side, but they extend past on one side. That's okay. When, when it dries, I'm going to cut those edges off, or those tips, or what have you off. Okay, so let's let that dry just for a minute. And then we'll get back to the fence that that would go on to after I finish this fence. All right, guys, now we're going to work with this fence again. Now, this fence will not stand up on its own, obviously, because these little eighth-inch posts are not big enough to balance on. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, uh, you can either use tacky glue uh, or I'm, I always use E6000 when it comes to uh, my terrain models. I'm surprised I didn't use E6000 on the entire thing, but because it's a wood model, Elmer's glue works just fine. Uh, but I'm going to use some E6000 on the bases because it's a little bit more tacky uh, in the fact that it won't want to tip over once I glue it. So I put a big bead of glue on each of the posts. And then what I'm going to do is, once I glue this down, I'm going to use some other wood. Here, I'll show you. I'm going to try to line the fence up, not the posts. I'm trying to line the fence up with the end of the stick here and the end of the stick there. Um, it, it does look like it's looking pretty good. And then I'm going to have my fence go pretty much right down the center of the of the popsicle stick pretty close straight up and down I'm going to hold it just for a minute now what I would normally do is take a uh, a glue bottle or a paint bottle let me grab a couple of paint bottles and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of paint bottles because if I let go, it's just going to use, notice how it's starting to fall over, right? Well, we're going to use the paint bottle to prop it straight up. And then I'm going to move this out of the way and let it dry over there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move it. And then right here, I've got uh, the scale, the fence, the paint bottle's holding it in place so that it doesn't tip left or right. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and let that dry. All right, let me work on the um, gate fence. And then we'll get back to that once that dries. All right, guys. Now we're going to come back. We're going to do the gated fence, right? I've already go ahead and trimmed off the wood that was stuck out. Uh, I'm going to take a couple of picks. I'm going to uh, trim the flat edge on one side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to line these up against the end of the popsicle stick like we normally would do, right? I'm going to grab a couple more for the other side, you know, like we normally would do. Okay, and now normally these would sit here and these would overlap. Right, these would
and then I would have three posts. Where are my posts? Normally, I would have my three posts where I'd have one on the end, one in the middle, and then one on the end, just like that one up there, and it would be that would be a fence. That would be no problem. Now, we're going to put a door in the fence. So what that means is I'm going to put the door probably somewhere that covers this overlap. Okay. Let's go ahead and put it right there. And then that kind of alerts me that I can take my pen make these a little bit closer together. There we go. And I can mark each of these sticks where the door would be. Okay, so now when I cut it, I don't want to cut it on that line. I want to give it just a little bit of gap. Okay, that way the door will actually fit in there without it being so snug that it can't move. Even though I am going to glue it in place. I do want to move it over just a hair on both sides. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to glue this one with the door open. So it doesn't really matter. It can be right on the line, but I'm still going to do a little bit of open just to just to show you what I mean. Okay, so get these posts out of the way because those are not the three posts we're going to be using. So that's the left posts. These are the right posts, right? And then this door is going to fit down inside that. So far so good, so far so good. Okay, so what that means is I'm gonna need two posts for each side of the door, right? Okay, now I'm gonna put the second post right next to the door. So there's gonna be a post right next to the door on both of these. Okay. Lay my two cross pieces in there. Hold it down. Give me a little glue right on the edge of this wood. Put this right along the edge of my straight edge. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Perfect. All right, so now we're going to let those dry before we put the slats on them. So we're going to take a little break, and then we'll be right back. All right, so we got these two posts. Uh, they appear to be close to being dry. So let's go ahead and put a bead of glue along the post. All right, guys, so I got the pickets on right there. There we go. Now we're going to let that dry just a couple of minutes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mount those onto this popsicle stick. And then I'll show you the door in the middle. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put these on the base. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and apply some glue onto the base right here and right here. I might put a little bit of glue along the bottom of the pickets and the post. Just so that when I stand it up... I'll be sitting in the glue, and then I line the outside picket with the edge of the base, and the outside picket with the edge of the base. Apply a little bit of pressure into the glue just to make sure that it's going to ride in there. And then on the door, I'm going to have it either swinging a little open 
or a little open this way. I think I'm going to do it this way. Um, so what I'm going to do is line this edge with the fence and then I'm going to push it out just a little bit but I'm not going to have it exceed beyond the edge of this base. And then what I'm going to do is set that off to the side. I'm going to put a little weight on it like paint bottles and I'm going to let it ride. Alright guys, i got a couple of these sitting here dry. We're going to go ahead and continue on with these guys so that you can see what they look like. Now, this is kind of what you're looking at before it gets painted and flocked. Uh, I have a little, uh, I have another one here with a little bit bigger gaps between the pickets. Um, and then some of the newer ones that I'm doing, I'm putting gaps between the pickets. I'm not putting them as tight as this one right here. All right, so let me go ahead and spray that. And then as soon as the brown paint is dry, we'll be right back. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to drop a little bit of white paint like Tom Sawyer on these uh, picket fences. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a stiff bristle brush. You can use a Citadel tank brush or you can use any stiff br bristle brush because what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically dry brush these suckers. Okay, so here we go. You basically can see the technique that I'm doing on the camera. Uh, it's going to take me a minute. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, once I get them dry brushed, I'll be right back. All right, now that I've whitewashed the fences, and they're looking like picket fences now what I'm gonna do is use some green and I'm just gonna touch up uh, in various spots where I might have dry brushed onto the brown and basically I'm just gonna kinda cover up any mistakes any over overage of the dry brushing alright so now what you can see is the base the any part that was white that kind of got overpainted onto the brown base has now been hit with green. So now it's actually got a green and brown mix on the base. Uh, let me go ahead and do these other two. When it dries, we'll be back to do some flocking. All right, guys, we're, we got these guys painted. Uh, they are dry, and you've probably seen me flock in the past, but if you haven't, uh, what you're going to see is I'm going to put a little bit of Elmer's glue in one of my palette tubs right there. Uh, this is not a whole lot of flock, so I don't need to put too much glue in there. And then I'm going to fill it. I'm going to go about 50-50 water and Elmer's. I'm going to use my nylon brush. I'm going to stir it up. Now, I didn't do any texturing of the base or uh, grit or anything like that. Uh, I didn't feel like it was necessary. All right, so got that mixed up. I'm gonna put it everywhere along the base. Okay, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna completely soak down the base it's going to look completely wet now because i'm using these for my quattro bra project i've decided uh, and they're they're representing the boundaries of my uh city of my uh what do you call it each town sector is going to have a picket fence going around it so what I've decided to do is flock these with burnt grass. Now 
Okay, as you can see, completely wet. Going over to my flockage, which is Woodland Scenics Burnt Grass. Remember the base is either brown or in spots green. So I don't have to put a whole lot of flock on here. Okay. I'm going to let that dry. Uh, I'm going to do these and then we'll be right back to do the reveal of what they look like. All right, so it's dried well enough. What we're going to do is go ahead and shake it off. Like we always do. All right, these guys are done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put them over here and do a little money shot on them, and we'll be done. All right, guys, thank you for coming out and checking out this picket fence making tutorial. And I hope this helps you make some fences in the future for your games. And if you want to see anything else from the channel, please let me know. I'm open for suggestions, uh, but I am working on my Quattro Bra project, so uh, most of my focus is on that right now. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.